Hi, I'm Rob Cram, and today we're taking a look at Hideo Kojima's Death Stranding on the PS4. So I'm still playing through the game. I'm about 40 hours into the game now, I think, according to my um, stats. And I have to say that this is one of the most interesting and unusual games that I've played in a long time. Um, I think Disco Elysium is also quite up there in the strange stakes, but at least with that you kind of know where you're going. This game is something different now. I've kind of kept away from a lot of the pre-release videos and stuff, so I kind of a lot of it was new to me when I started playing. But I have to say from the offset that this is a game that is not going to grab you in those first opening moments. And if it doesn't grab you in those first opening moments, then my advice is to keep playing, keep playing. But if it doesn't grab you enough, then you're not really going to get much more out of it. Even if the game does actually improve quite dramatically, the further you get into it, so let's just have a look at the basics. At its heart, it is a funny joke from Hideo, Hideo Kojima that I think it's a joke anyway. I'm gonna I'm gonna imagine the man saying, "Look, we have all these video games where over time the same processes happen in every video game. You have a controller, you push up on the controller, the character moves forward, and that is pretty much the size of it in." hundreds and thousands of games so let's do something a bit different let's sort of revolve a whole game around that mechanic of pushing up on the controller but make it so that it's going to add our own kind of style in in the inside of that so what starts out as a basic walking simulator as you begin to play, you enter kind of this surreal world of supernatural beings and crazy cast of characters, as you'd expect. And, you know, as you progress through the story, there's an underlying theme that, you know, humanity has lost its human touch through social media, etc. And now, sort of, as this character, Sam Bridges, you're adding that human touch to everybody in this sort of post-apocalyptic setting and um, frankly I am really happy and impressed with the game so far it's been highly addictive and um, extremely fun to play I mean it's made me look at things I wouldn't normally look at in video games and it's made me sort of have a better understanding or greater understanding of the details which are often you rush straight past them and continue on to your objective in other games. But here you're kind of looking at the basics. So for example, in this game, you have to be mindful of the weather. You know, you have to look at the weather conditions. You have to look at your map. You have to look at the terrain that you're going to cross. You've got to look at these areas that are controlled by the uh, mules. These are other human beings. And you've got to look at everything as a whole. The distances as well. How long is it going to take you to get from one point to the other? I mean, it's... Uh, things that you wouldn't normally necessarily take into consideration. Let's take a normal game, for example. Let's say normal in the loosest sense. You look at the map. You say, right, here's my character here. Sam on the map at the junk dealer. We've got to get to, I don't know, let's say this lake here to drop off this cargo. So how am I going to do that? I'm just going to set a waypoint marker here. Bam. And then we're just going to walk from there to there. Or even fast travel from there to there. And bam, that's it. You're done. No problems. But in this game now, you have the added mechanic now of... Alright. So I've got to take all these boxes here. Which are contaminated. And put them in the... Where well, I put that marker. In the lake. It's the only way to get rid of them. As you can see here, my character is quite well evolved. Uh, I've even got weapons now. And. Oops, I'm not doing that right. I have to now manage 
all of these things on my actual person. <laughs> this is where I think this, the joke is from Kojima, is that, you know, in a lot of games you have this sort of magic inventory system where everything gets put away inside deep invisible pockets. Okay, but as on this game though, you pick things up, you start to actually impact the character in a realistic manner. So you've got this, all games even do it, even those that purport to be realistic, you know, allow you to carry hundreds of objects with no penalty to the character. So you can see I've picked all these contaminated items up, they're now on my person. I now have to be wary of my balance when I'm walking along. Now I can do things to mitigate falling over. You think, oh, that's fine on a flat surface like here. No problems at all just running around here but then as soon as you sort of enter into the open worlds here where you've got these rocks you know and stuff like that and huge drops and stuff like that as well to impact your stability and you'll find that you're sort of paying attention to these sort of minor details that you wouldn't necessarily think about in other games so let me just show you a feature now something that's added to the game further into it which is so useful in the that would be so useful in the beginning I can now offload these onto a little carrier which means my stability is better and I can use myself now to carry more items I can just attach that to me and I'm wearing these sort of leggings as well let me just see if i can uh, open that menu up you can see that um let's have a look well i'm, I'm wearing power leggings at the moment which enable me to run at great speed in fact these are actually speed leggings there's power leggings as well Look at the first person view. I can even move around in first person. There's my marker over there, which is 376. So if I look at this situation here now, okay, I'm running through fairly open terrain. I could use a vehicle to cross here. And then I've got to look at the mountains ahead. And I've got to climb over those to reach my destination. So let's just keep going. We've got this sort of extreme speed now. At the beginning of the game, it's just so slow paced. You've got this sort of basic character, you know, he's vulnerable, he's not going to move very fast. You've got no sort of skills, no tools to help you out. It's only sort of this far into the world. Who are these people? Okay, these are junk mules and they're good guys they're not people that are going to attack me thank god right so now storm's brewing so this is where you have to be mindful now of the rain and obviously this being a kojima game there's a stealth element i've lost my bearings there's my marker there, right. So there is an actual competent stealth game in here as well. So not only are you this sort of courier character bringing people together across the United States of America in a post-apocalyptic situation, you're also this kind of, not a super soldier per se, you're kind of like a regular guy, but you've got to avoid the supernatural as one thing, which in itself is a game and um, you've also got to avoid those mule characters if they're... I'm just looking around, if they're enemies. Luckily those two were um, friendlies. So you've got this kind of stealth options to sneak around and sort of do that as well. And that's pretty cool. So, I mean, in, in total, when you look at the whole... the uh, All the different facets of this game and put it as a whole you realise that there's actually a pretty amazing game here. And um, obviously it's not a game that everyone's going to like. I think some of the bits at the beginning are way too slow paced. 
and uh, way too wacky to sort of introduce the game. But then again, you know, if you stick with it, these little extras really do add up to sort of make the game much better, much more interesting. Right, so here's the marker. So I've got to drop all these items off into this lake here. But we've got enemy ghosts near us now. Which only now have I been able to sort of fight back against them properly using this weapon. But, I mean, this is, I'm really just sort of touching on the basics. The more in-depth stuff is that you need to really sort of start delivering items Water. If I go too deep in here, it will swallow me up. And then I've got to. Uh, I'm going to the menu. I'm being a bit rusty here. Alright, I need to drop all of this stuff. Offload that. I'll get out of here because I'll sink. You can watch all of those just sink into the. There you go, Junk Dealer gave me two likes for your support. Right, let's get my. pick up my um, trolley. Let's get out of here, head back to the base. So as I was saying, at the beginning of the game, it's all very slow paced and really sort of laborious work. But then as you sort of progress, you start getting all these items that make your job just that little bit easier. And I think some people have misunderstood some of that aspect. I mean, one I, I checked out somebody's review. Can't remember who it was, IGN, GameSpot or something. And they said, oh yeah. They give you a vehicle to play with, and then the next minute, your area that you're supposed to cross is filled with rocks. So many rocks that you can't even use the vehicle. So what's the point of that? And I think there is a big point of that, is that you use the vehicle and find routes through these areas. That's part of the game, is that? Finding the routes through the areas, or using that vehicle to backtrack and complete deliveries in other areas that where a vehicle is more appropriate to do that quicker. Right, so here we now got a situation where we're in the ghost territory. So you can even now sort of really stealth it around using that weird kind of tool there to sort of, which marks the enemies with your BB, your baby that you have. That shows the enemy there. You can even sneak around And his little shelter here actually that someone's left and that's another aspect of the game that is really cool is that you see other people's stuff that they've built which can really help you but as soon as I've got nothing that sort of will deteriorate then it's not really a problem for me if you're carrying precious cargo let's try this thing see what happens Whoa. Really use this before. You use your own blood. Well, that's got him out of the way, so at least that would enable me to pass. Yeah, he's gone. Maybe that's quite good to use as a last ditch attack if you're going to get busted. Right, let's see which one am I supposed to go here. Lake's not sitting. It's a long way off. So let's just make this journey. So I'll put a... Um, if 
I mean, if you're patient, you can sort of avoid these ghosts Not quite easily. So it's kind of making a slow game even slower. But I mean, the tension early on in the game, when you've got no sort of tools to fight back, is really high. It's really kind of crazy how you're going from this sort of standard, oh, let's be mindful of the terrain where I'm stepping, let's not fall over, let's not damage the goods, to this suddenly weird sort of slow, methodical, Crouch walking, hold your breath if they get too close, struggle if they kind of grab you. It's pretty amazing how all these kind of systems work together. And I did read or look at Jim Sterling's review of this, and you know, he kind of, I think he, he tried to like the game, but it, he just felt that it was too up, its, up itself in too many different systems that took the fun out of the game but I think um, using the word fun in the traditional sense here is kind of wasted I think it's kind of like it's not necessarily a fun game more it's an interesting experience that's different but it's not that different it's just using the same mechanics that we use in all these other video games but just sort of fine-tuning it and focusing on certain aspects that we normally overlook and it's a uh, pretty damn interesting as a result and this sort of area is massive in terms of uh, the ghosts I mean I could try and see if we escaped okay no fatalities that's quite oh. easy. Right, let's get moving. We're up the pace. So look already, look, the difference in terrain now. From that sort of moon, Mars moon surface to this really rocky, volcanic. Which is just really awkward to walk on. It's proper draining my battery as well for my um power leggings. Whoops. That's it out of there. So you can imagine you can't drive a vehicle over those rocky stones, but you might be able to find an alternate route to go round them a longer way. You know, I think that's what needs to I think you have to balance that there's a lot of discovery in terms of learning the map, finding routes, you know, and um, following others, what they've done, but also finding your own path and then sticking to it. We've got a place over here, I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, I mean, it is a solitary game. It's a game that you, so you play on your own but you've always got this indication that there are other people in the world. There are people alive out there. You've got those mule characters that we saw earlier. You've also got other Sandbridge characters um, that are in the world in their own games doing the same thing as you are um, and leaving traces of themselves as well, which is quite cool. So we've made it to the film director. Beginning scan. Scanning bridges ID. You know, and there's always this kind of sense of, oh, a big massive relief once you do actually reach your destination. I mean, there's not many games that sort of give you that same sort of feeling. Activate the terminal. So this is where you can take on orders, make deliveries, and pick up other people's failed deliveries. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff here that you can do which is quite cool and... 
different. It's just completely different to anything I've played before. You know, it's uh, a bit mad. But I like it. It's been very um, enthralling and... Uh, It's just um, a completely different type of game that I, you know, you wouldn't, how, how would you, how would you, um, what would you class the game as, what would you, what would you pigeonhole it, what's the genre is this game, I mean it's got all sorts of different connotations to it, but I would also say that it's a pretty, pretty big joke on walking simulator, that's what it is. So we've just come from all the way from there to there and it's taken us how long to do that? And our destination is all the way up here. And you can actually construct things as well, which will help, which will give you, you can even construct like a, a base, which you can then fast travel from that base. Yeah, but I'm sort of a bit out in the sticks here. So let's keep moving. I'm heading towards the main hub over here. But let's see. There's that area here. Might be better off going here first. But, I mean, you just take on jobs for people. You know, you they give you work. And then you just do your thing. You do all the hard work. And they're very thankful for you doing that. And I think the game also have this system of likes. You know, the whole game revolves around getting likes from other players, Weapons from the people that you're doing the work for. You know, so I, I think it's a, a narrative that we see in our real life situation based on social media. I think Kojima is making a commentary on that. that we're in a situation where we're very much um, reward-based in, in our actions, looking for likes for the things that we do. And this whole game is sort of based around that, which is quite interesting. Nice so I mean, you know, I'm not really showing you much of interest here, but you know, that I think, as I said, when you take the whole game and piece it together and put all those little individual segments as, as one game over the course of many hours playing, um, you then begin to sort of appreciate what all those different systems represent and how well they've been incorporated and. Um, yeah, that it just it just works. And it's going back into the rain again. Yeah, I'm heading the right direction. So shame I've not really shown you anything of too interesting, but I think you know this is quite indicative of the game, of the lot of the game. It's just walking around across this terrain, different types of terrain, as you can see now in the distance. You have some lush green hills or mountains. You've got the sort of snowy peaks. And you've got these oily sort of volcanic ash type swamp areas. You know, you've got different types of of terrain which make your job more difficult or easier depending on what you're doing at the time. At the moment we're not delivering anything so there's no problem trudging through all of this. For example, if you're carrying some precious cargo, then um, the last thing you want is to be falling over and damaging that cargo. Your whole sort of job becomes keeping That's that cargo one. undamaged, making sure it's in pristine condition. You know, what kind of other game makes you feel that way? There we go. I mean, you do have missions in games where, you know, you're doing a driving mission let's say in GTA 5 and you know got like, cars trying to ram you and you're carrying stuff that is game over if it gets too damaged well it's that principle but it's on a completely different level you know it's got na natural um, 
threat to that. You've got uh, the human threat to that. You've got the supernatural threat to that. You know, it's kind of crazy. Well, here we're coming up on um, a mule base. So again, you can stealth it, or you can shoot your way through. But I'm not carrying any cargo of any interest to anybody. So therefore, they're not going to be particularly interested in me. And they leave these kind of invisible sensors all around, which will track your cargo, like this one here. It'll suddenly ping at me. To alert the base. But I've managed to get a skill now. So you, you don't have this skill earlier on in the game where you can ping back to stop them from picking you up. I just did that successfully then, which is good. Just save me a whole heap of hassle if I was carrying some precious cargo. I mean, we can sort of go down here now and see if we can infiltrate this base and start doing a bit of the old Metal Gear Solid style infiltration. In fact, some of those missions will require you to do so. Let's see how we fare. She's got the hiding in long grass. See if I can um, use no. It's that one. We use the strand. Oops. Let's see if I can sneak up in this guy. some nice stuff here so you can't just again another feature you can't just go in somewhere and just pick everything up and think yeah I'm just gonna walk out of there carrying all this stuff it doesn't work like that well, let's see if I can uh, put this on the truck You don't kill anybody either in this game. It's very pacifist. You're non-lethally knocking them out, which is quite cool. And obviously, the more you carry, the more difficult it is. Whoops, I'm going to get spotted. I think I was. Yep, they're on me, so let's get back to the truck. Done. Right, let's see if I can drive this truck away now and get out of here. got their methods of being able to stop me from doing that. Oh, that 
looks like that truck's uh, not going anywhere. Trying to get out of here. But yeah, there was a bit of action. And then you've got these mad things like this. You can't get across here. You've got to find a way across. You, know, you can either use tools that are available to you. Or what someone else has left here. That's useful. Let's use that. Quickly get away. But they'll come down and follow me down here. It's not a quick escape. things at you. Gotcha. See if we can get out of here. And there's the ladder that I put over there before. I'm on the wrong side. I assume that's my ladder. Again, you've got a balance as well, your inventory, what kind of mission are you on? Like, should you take tools with you to help you out in these situations? Like a ladder would help me out to get out of here. You know, I've not equipped myself with any of that stuff. Do you leave it to chance based on what other people have done? Because really, I need to just get out of here quick. Climbing anchor's no good, you come down here. Come on Sam, move it. He seems to just crawl to a halt. inhospitable terrain here, it's just not. Well, I think that's giving you a good idea of the basics. I mean, really touching on the surface. The, the whole game is really about character building, getting Sam's sort of abilities up there so he can cope with these sort of expeditions. But then it's you versus the elements. And all these supernatural threats, other humans, the elements. Completely different game. So I'm going to do a proper full review when I've finished it. At the moment though, it's, um, as I said, 40 hours into the game. Story seems a bit... Story's kind of basic, but you can see the kind of message that Kojima's trying to present here. Oh, I'm running out of stamina here. But you know, it's um, mm, that's good. An interesting game, and 
a game that you're not likely to play again. I mean, or find anything similar. It's just so different. Let's see if we can get to this base here. At least you can have a look at the base. Some of the other people around, if I can get to it. So, I mean, as, as you see, from where we were at the beginning of the game and to where we are now, um, I mean, look at the complete contrast in the terrain type. You've got all these crazy rocks here. You get it really hard to drive over if you had a vehicle. I picked someone else's uh, dropped stuff up here. I'm just going at a snail's pace because the batteries run out. And then pick up all this stuff, deliver it. And then I've got this other item that I can use to make it a lot easier. Let's just quickly show you that. So if you go to your menu, manage the cargo, and you want to put the floating carrier down. I should be able to just drop that down from the menu there. Attach it to me. And offload all of this cargo onto it. And then it just makes it so much easier now to for me to traverse this terrain without the extra baggage on me. As you can see, the difference now in speed. I think also as well, the viewpoint that you have is quite deceptive. It may look like you're traveling at a snail's pace with the character behind you like with the camera behind you like that but when you actually turn it to the side Sam's going at a pretty decent pace okay let's move into this base here Whew, we made it all clear welcome Sam Porter Bridges this is my vehicle could use again you can't use it on those kind of rocky surfaces that I just showed you there let's, let's just go back here interact with the terminal and this is what you're going to be doing a lot of in the game so you can make take on orders deliver lost cargo I mean if you take it to the right place you get more likes for doing so And you've got these kind of really sort of basic characters here that you interact with. You evaluate your performance. Better evaluation, the more likes you receive. There you go. Our total playtime, 31 hours. So I said 40 hours. 31 hours. Hey, what's the difference of 10 hours? So we've been playing now for 1 hour 16 minutes. Right. I'll well, take care of yourself. Yep. Good work. New order available. Please access delivery terminal for further information. Let's just go down here into the private room. Again, you can create your own your work is great. safe house if you put them anywhere. But there's always got a place where you can rest your head and get your stamina put back and the rest of it. And you 
kind of look at your character and you're like, yeah, man, mentally I feel like that after that massive journey that we've just taken. That's how you feel mentally drained and exhausted that you managed to make it. And you've just traveled like a little way across the map. It's quite crazy. Because it is an ordeal. When you're trying to transport valuable items or stuff that's got certain... Conditions attached to it, then you know it's kind of crazy that you survived all of those pitfalls that have gone against you for the entire journey. It's pretty crazy stuff. I mean, showering is a part of the game in terms of getting you more ammo against the uh, ghosts. Skip that for now. I mean, they showed a lot of this pre-release, but what they didn't show was the fragile jump. It enables you to just travel, fast travel. You lose all your items. And that's where you start the game there. And there's my safe house. So let's go and fast travel somewhere just to give you... I mean, the whole point of being able to fast travel seems like something that's not ever, never going to happen when you first start playing the game. You're like, oh my gosh, if only there was a fast travel. Well, then sort of 20 hours into the game, it's like, oh, you can fast travel, but you can't let's keep your stuff. Let's get this show on the road. I think I've found that all of the characters so far are kind of weird. Kind of, um, no, no one's too exuberant or anything like that. It's kind of um, very basic characters with very little emotion other than the kind of sad um, demeanor to them. There's no one sort of overly happy in this world that Kojima is presenting here. And um, yeah, everything's just pretty grim. Which is mad. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. I think it's given you a good idea of my initial impressions of this game. And um, I think it's a game that if it doesn't draw you in the first few hours, then it's not going to draw you in. I mean, things do get better, but only in the sense that you're still doing the same things and you've got more options available to you to do those same things. But, um, yeah. Let's check on... We've got to check on BB. This is your... This is your radar, basically. Your scanner. It's a different way of doing it. Oh, he's got his back to me. He's not happy. What have I done to piss him off? That's new. So I wasn't actually there then. Anyway, as I said, let's leave it at that. I've come an hour into the video. And I think I've given you my impressions. Oh. And I'm still going to work my way through this game to the very end. I mean, this is something that I'm compelled to do now. I've started it and I've finished. It's not something, something I'm going to give up on and... So you know what, I've seen it all now. It keeps improving all the time and um, yeah, I really like it, definitely. But I can appreciate that it's very niche in terms of your enjoyment and whether you're gonna like it or not. A lot of people are just gonna be like, what is this bullshit? And um, not like it at all. But I think uh, for me and my taste, it's one of the most unique gaming experiences I've had for a long time. And, um, yeah, I am enjoying it in a kind of weird way. 
not in the traditional instant gratification ways that you might get from other games. But it's a, it's a long haul kind of gratification that you get from playing, from getting better and, you know, upgrading and just, um, Have a pleasant journey. Having a pleasant journey, yeah, of course. We've got this kind of different location now, desert, rocky desert. Compare that to sort of the red sand we had at the beginning of the game. Well, good. So I've lost all this stuff that I was carrying. I should have offloaded that into the private room. But yeah, let's leave it at that. This is Death Stranding on PS4. It's coming to PC as well later in 2020. And yeah, it's a cool game. Okay, I'm out of here.